right.media. Live from Lucille's Roadhouse, it's the Swasu Coaches Show. Brought to you by ASAP Energy, Anadarko Dozer and Trucking, PSO, Pioneer Cellular, Jet Distributing, CJ Southwest Tire, Butcher's Wine and Spirits, McDonald's of Weatherford, Clinton, and Elk City, Bank First, CK Energy, More Than Medicine, A Plus Roofing, and Weatherford Regional Hospital. Now let's head out to Lucille's with Stephen McTeer. Happy Wednesday and welcome into the Swasu Coaches Show here at Loose Hills Roadhouse on Old Route 66 in Weatherford. I'm Stephen McTeer. We'll talk Swasu football, Swasu rodeo. We'll also talk about that big announcement from the NCAA today that named Haley Tucker one of the top nine finalists for the NCAA Woman of the Year. We begin, though, with football as always. Bulldogs coming off a near upset over Washita Baptist 26-21 to last weekend at Milam Stadium. We always begin with head coach Chet Poblish. Coach, welcome back. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, boy, back to last Saturday, that was uh, that was as exciting a game as I think a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people thought it was going to be that exciting. Washtenaw comes in incredibly good. Uh, they have had great success against Swasu in the past, but you guys stick with them. And I want to start in the first half. Two touchdowns to Jared Rayburn, who had missed a game with a concussion. He comes back. For me, it looked like the offense was just way more comfortable and it looked more dynamic with him out there. What did him coming back mean for the offense, especially for Tyler throwing the ball? I think it just brought some confidence, um, some leadership. You know, I just think Jared brings a little different aspect to the football team, and he, you know, put himself in position to be able to execute some plays, and I was proud of that. I know that, uh, you know, as as you go into halftime, it's it's 17-14. There's not a whole lot to separate the two of you. What was the conversation like in the in the locker room? What'd you tell your guys? Well, I told them the same thing I told them all week. Um, it wasn't going to take a su- superhuman effort from anybody. It wasn't going to take. We had, nobody was going to play above and beyond. It was just a matter of doing your job and doing what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, we told them that. And at and halftime, they were all looking at me like, well, we're really in this. And I told them, I said, yeah, just do what you're supposed to do, make the plays you're supposed to make, and we're going to be in this thing and play hard. And they did. So, I know that, uh, you know, that, that third quarter, that drive you guys had to, to take the lead 21-20 to 20, that, you know, you know scored late in the, or early in the fourth. Uh, two fourth down conversions that drive. I called it the gutsiest drive of the year. Uh, big run in the uh, in the before the 50-yard line, and of course that fourth down and goal to go. Was there any thought at all not to go for it on fourth down that drive, or was that full four down territory from the get-go? Um, no, I mean I just felt like we had some stuff in the bag that was that was ready to go. Um, I felt like there was plays that that we knew that that, that I felt comfortable that we executed at a pretty high level um, that we hadn't shown yet, and so I, I just felt confident. And then the, the last fourth down, uh, Tyler Moore called. Um, it's a play. It's a, it's one of our two-point plays we practiced, and we only actually practiced it to the right. We were on the right hash, we had to do it to the left, and he's yelling. I said, yeah, do it. So we called it, and um, they executed it just like we do every day in practice. And so I was, I was excited about that. Yeah, how, how much improvement has, has Tyler shown in the offense shown for, for you to have the confidence to look at your quarterback and say, okay, if that's what you feel comfortable with, let's get out there and do it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I told him, you know, that throw he makes on that first fourth down um, over the middle, I told him, I said, Tyler, I'll, I'll be honest with that. That was a throw that I didn't think that you could make. I mean, he throws it off his back foot, um, over top of the linebacker, and it, it was impressive throws I've seen him make, and um, I was just real pleased and got confidence that I, I have a pretty good idea where he's going to go with the ball. That's the main thing. It's it's that when we call things and what we see, I feel like I know where he's going to go, and when he doesn't, we communicate. And I'm not saying I'm right or he's right. I'm just saying we're on the same page, and that makes things a lot easier. You know, I, final score, you know, 26-21, they go down, they score. I, I expect a team like that to respond, I think, with a little bit of adversity, but Final score aside, I feel like there's a lot of positives to take from that game. When, when you went back and watched the tape this week, what are some things that you looked at that you thought you guys did really well? I thought we played hard. There, there, I mean, we played hard. There's some guys that I think played as hard as I've seen. Um, you guys, you would not only say you wouldn't expect, but just Malcolm Davis. I mean, Malcolm, the number 18 after the game cold came over to me and said, number four gave me more than I've ever had while playing football here. Um, Javatric Daughtry, um, there's one play, Javatric Daughtry, there's a pulling guard out there and, and the running back, and that's it. And Javatric cuts the guard and makes a tackle. If not, it's a 30 yard touchdown. So um, I'm pleased with how hard we played. You know, I, I think we should have won. I wish we would have should have won, but I'm, I'm happy with how hard we played. This week, you go back to Arkansas and Magnolia against Southern Arkansas, a team that uh, has had uh, the Bulldogs number, especially in Magnolia. What have you seen from them on tape this week? They're talented. They're, they're as talented as anybody. We'll see. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're breaking a new quarterback. The quarterback they had last year was a four-year starter. Um, I know the kid that's playing for him now. He's from Santa Monica, Louisiana. Um, 
But, you know, if he gets rolling, they're real scary. And defense, they could basically got everybody back from last year. They lost, you know, they lost that All-American defensive end they had. But the guy that they replaced him with isn't, isn't too shabby either. So, you know, they're, they're going to be a good football team. we got to execute and play physical to have a chance to win. I know you preach, you know, it's about us. It's about it's about execution. So when, when you talk about that this week, what's been the focus for you guys when, when you're focused on yourselves? No, just us, you know, executing what we got to do. Got to get lined up. Um, you know, I told him after practice today, you know, tomorrow is about focusing and get things tightened down and, and making sure we know what to do. And, you know, it really is just about us executing and doing what we know what we, we can do and nothing more, nothing less. I know that, uh, you know, we talked after the home opener about the crowd and the energy that they had. I have not heard the stadium like that after Donnell's touchdown on fourth down. Uh, to have that kind of energy, and I think, you know, not that people were surprised. I mean, I'm, honestly, people probably were surprised outside of the program that you guys were in that game. But uh, how was it playing in front of in front of that kind of energy, realizing when people were like, oh, okay, hold on, we're still in this thing? Yeah, it, it was it was great, you know, and you're right. I, I don't think a, a lot of people outside of our circle really thought we had a chance, but we talked all week. We knew we would if we executed. And, um, you know, we kind of used that as motivation. And, and even after the game, the amount of text messages and – and, and voicemails and things that I got from people just, you know, kind of lights a little fire inside of me because I think it's a lot of people that didn't think we had a chance. Um, but, you know, we'll just continue to focus on us and keep getting better. And like I said, the trust the process and the wins will come. I know you guys are super banged up. Uh, has that gotten any better this week? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got some guys back and we lost some guys. Um, you know, we'll probably get Darius Franklin back. Um, that's probably about it. Um, yeah, I think Jared Young's probably out for the year. He played. Did, he I, mean, did I don't play. know if you watched. He last, played great. He played on a torn meniscus. Really? Yeah, the entire game. And the end. He wouldn't have known it. He ended up dislocating his shoulder. I mean, that guy. So he's going to have surgery next week and get that knee fixed and you know come back. So, um, but that man seeing somebody play with a torn meniscus and as hard as he played, even though the tackles he wasn't making, he was forcing the ball to other places. And uh, so proud of him. Yeah, it, we talk about injuries. It, it's a part of the game. Guys have to step up. Have you been pleased with the way that some of those guys that weren't in the starting lineup have now come into their own and played? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that's part of football is is you've got to be ready. Next man up. You know, put another bull in the chamber. You know, all, all those little things that you say, and um, that's what we've got to do. And I've I've been pleased. You know, we probably got some younger guys in some situations they probably shouldn't be in, but hey, it's college football, and they're here to play. So. Head coach Chet Poblish with us. Bulldogs are in Magnolia, Arkansas. It's a 2 o'clock kick against the Mule Riders on Saturday. Coach, appreciate you coming out. Thanks for having me. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about the stellar offensive line play for the Bulldogs with offensive line coach Jake Wareheim here on the Swasu Coaches Show. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we hire. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. Coors Light is cold pack. for peak refreshment. The world's most refreshing beer, Coors Light. When was the last time you looked at your cellular bill? No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. 
Pioneer has introduced new plans that will help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Welcome back to the Swasu Coaches Show here at Lucille's Roadhouse on a Wednesday evening. I'm Stephen McTeer. We're joined in now by offensive line coach Jake Wareheim. Coach, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you having me on. Made your fiance come on her birthday. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully whatever you bought her today was was worth it. Oh, there's no doubt. So, uh, first year Weatherford came from Trinity Valley Junior College, where, boy, I've seen a lot of guys around the GAC from Trinity Valley, our team, other teams. Uh, before we get to, you know, stuff here, uh, how's the transition been? Yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, and I think it helps where you have a staff like we have here that um, really allows me to open up and be who I am, um, coach how I want to, and do what I need to do to help this program as best I can. Um, but, again, I think it's all based off of the staff that we work for. You, know, you talk about coaching the way you want to. The offensive line has allowed a total of two sacks this year, yep. second in the conference. Um, coming into this season, I know that you know the left tackle's back. That's obviously huge. Uh, with the veterans that you have back, like Cal, who we're going to talk to here in a minute, uh, how confident were you that this group had the chance to be one of the best in the conference? Yeah, there's no doubt. I think they have the work ethic. They're very coachable. They listen to what I have to say. Um, they were good whenever I got here. It was just we had to fine-tune some things to get them where I think they need to be. Um, we're not where we need to be yet. Um, that's always going to be, as an offensive line coach, that's always kind of the answer is we can always get better, I guess. Um, so that's where we are. I know that uh, you know the right side of the line coming into the year was was young, didn't, mm -hmm. didn't have a whole lot of experience under their belts, uh, if any. How much have they improved over the, over the first few games? Uh, they've improved immensely. I mean, both of them, the two that have started the most um, – are both redshirt freshmen, um, which is bright. And I think it's a good thing because you think about it, they still have three years to play. Um, so they're getting a lot of valuable experience. Um, we're able to bump some guys in every now and then. Jared Aiken's another guy that's uh, very good. He's been good since he's got here. Um, another one is being able to shuffle those guards around from being able to take Billy out, put Brock in, then bump Ingram Scroggins in over there at left guard. Um, they've all done a really, really good job. I'm proud of those guys. You know, have, having returners on, on one side of the line compared to young guys on the other side, how much have guys like Corey and Cal, how much have they acted, you know, as coaches, whether that's on the field, whether that's at practice, how much easier does it make your job when you've got guys like that? Yeah, I mean, it always makes the job easier whenever you have guys that have, one, played a ton of football, um, and they kind of understand how things operate. Um, and some of those young guys definitely look up to them, I think. I mean, they seem to, at least. Um, they may not express it, but I think they do. Um, and Cal and Corey, all those older veteran guys that have played a bunch of ball do a tremendous job, especially in uh, meetings and individual work where they help those younger guys get to where they think they need to be. You guys have obviously played some talented teams the last couple of weeks. You're going to get another one in Southern Arc. Uh, what, what's been the biggest challenge for you the last couple of weeks in preparing for, for teams that have that kind of talent? Uh, I think it's just like... I don't like to say that it's we're going to prepare any other way because I think every game you should prepare the same, um, regardless if they're nationally ranked or if they are 6-5 and five from last year. It doesn't matter. Every team in this conference is very good um, from top to bottom. You have to bring your A game every week. Um, obviously, last week you play a nationally ranked team and you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and I think that speaks volume, especially for our team, to where it's you can go play with anybody. But you have to do – now they understand that you have to go do that every week. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you talk about not, not being where you want to be yet. So what are the steps you need to take? What are the things you still have to improve on? Uh, I think you're – as an offensive line coach, you're always trying to improve as best you can. Um, the goal and the objective is obviously to keep the quarterback upright as best we can, whoever that is. Um, having two sacks, it's good, you know, but it's not ideal, if that makes sense. I'd like to be able to run the ball better. Um, I've challenged those guys this week to be able to run the football. Um, and I think they'll hold up the challenge. Southern Arkansas, obviously a good team. We talk about preparing the same way. When you look at their defensive line, they obviously graduate a, an absolute mm -hmm. stud at defensive end. What are the challenges that, that you've had in preparing for them? Uh, I think they're really, really athletic. Like as a D-line as a whole, those guys can run to the football, and when some of those guys turn it on and they play, they're really, really good. I think they're as good in the conference as they are right now. 
I know that you know this stretch of, of six straight Arkansas schools seems like the Arkansas schools all have one constant they can all run the ball except you know Harding's obviously really good mm -hmm. and Henderson throws it a bunch mm -hmm. this is kind of a tough stretch for you guys uh, mm -hmm. with, with all six in a row do you like where you're at even though you know Monticello game didn't go the way we want to but you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Washita the improvement from you know week one to now do you still like where you guys are absolutely I really do um, I think that this team does a really, really good job, and it starts in the locker room, uh, of those guys policing each other, um, holding each other accountable. And that's something that we always talk about is holding each other accountable um, because it is – we are a family. We are who we are, right? Um, it's all about us. We hear it all the time. We talk about it, um, and it's it holds truth. And I think those guys have done a really, really good job of holding those, I don't know, I, I guess ide ideologies up, if that makes sense. I know that, uh, you know, obviously having having your center back is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, having, you know, being a senior, we're going to talk to him in a second. But uh, how big has Cal been for you guys on the offensive line, especially all that ball that he's played at the center position? Yeah. Um, that's the thing that I think, especially as an offensive lineman, whenever you have a guy that's in the room that has played a lot of football, whether it's junior college or being here for four or five years, it always helps because you gain that experience. Um, he's played against a lot of really good football players and over the time where you gain all that experience you learn how to play the game and you understand it more and more as you continue to play it and he's done a really good job to where he prepares really well he gets his mind right that he needs to to get ready to play on Saturdays um, and that's what he does. Bulldog offensive line like I said allowing just two sacks this year and coach Jake Wareheim coach appreciate you for coming appreciate on you. happy birthday over there as well. Uh, we'll talk with one of his offensive linemen. We'll talk with his senior center, Cal Backer, when we come back here on the Swasu Coaches Show. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas in Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. Family and CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co-op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. Welcome back to the Swasser Coaches Show here at Lucille's Roadhouse. We've got senior center Cal Baker with us. Uh, you know, we just talked to Coach Wareheim about the offensive line this year. Uh, it's your second year uh, under Coach Poblish and Coach Hennis and all these guys. Yep. Uh, how much how much smoother is it for you coming into year number two in the same system? Uh, that's really, really good. Um, I, spell, I made an adjustment from a uh, tackle going into center. Um, we had Coach Wareheim coming in in the spring, and uh, it really hit the ground running with him. Um, I just got the ball rolling quick. 
I know that, uh, you know, obviously Tyler's coming into his first year as a starting quarterback. How much time did it take you guys during the spring to, to kind of get acclimated and get your timing down? Man, uh, Tyler, Tyler's done a really good job. He did a really good job um, when he first got into, there, into that role. Um, it's really, it didn't miss a beat. Um, we picked up right where we left off and kept on rolling with it. Uh, we talked about having, you know, the, the veteran leadership like you guys have, but also, you know, uh, Billy and Riley be, being young guys and playing as much as they are. How much pride do you take in, in helping those guys improve as the year goes on? Oh, uh, man, it's, it, it's, it doesn't put as much on me. You know, I'm, uh, I feel like I'm doing a good job of being a leader to those guys and everything. Uh, those guys, they've done a really good job of um, filling in where they need to come in at, you know. Um, young guys, they've done a great job and really hadn't missed anything going on out there. I know that, uh, you know, Coach talked about uh, being able to run the ball a little bit better is, is kind of one of the goals. How, how do you guys go about, you know, is there something you change in your technique, mindset? You know, how, how do you go about achieving that goal and running the ball a little better? Um, yeah, well, we haven't had much success in the beginning. Um, it's slowly progressing, coming up. Um, really, we just change our mindset, man. We uh, feel like, you know, we can't get any worse than what we have been, you know. We uh, just got to hit it, you know and get low, drive the guys out of there and do our jobs so the running backs get uh, through those holes. You guys, like, you know, we talked about uh, all evening that you guys have played a ton of talented teams this year. Um, when you play a team like, like Washita and you allow just one sack and you keep them out of the backfield, right. you, know, it, you know, Coach talked about preparing the same way no matter who it is, but that's got to feel pretty good. I mean, it's a six-ring team yeah. in the country that, that's wreaked a lot of havoc. You right. know, when you when you guys do that, how much of a confidence builder is that for you? Uh, yeah, that's a, you know, it's a really good confidence builder for us. Um, you know, it kind of upset us, you know, because we had one leading up to that game. Um, giving up one in that game, it kind of upset us, you know, because we could have done better to prevent that. You know, little hookups here and there. Um, but, you know, we're just going to move on to the next play and keep on moving on. I know it's your senior year and it's going to it's gonna end before you know it. It's, that's what no, it's everybody fast. older than you says yep, all the time. Uh, fast. But uh, how much... How much time are you, are you trying to take this year to, to kind of realize what is going on and, and try to kind of soak it all in, whereas maybe your freshman, sophomore year, you're just kind of getting through games? Right. Freshman, sophomore year, man, I was I was looking forward to the end of practice, you know, uh, getting through it and getting to the game day, you know. Um, but here this past this past year so far, man, I slowed down and realized, like, this is it. You know, this is the last time I'm going to be able to play football. Um, Coach Pope does a great job of uh, leading us up in team meetings, leading up to practice, of uh, slowing down and just realizing, you know, like, it's a great game of football you get to play, you know, and um, just take every little bit of minutes, like, um, to get in and soak it all in, you know. Cal Baker with us here on the Swansu Coaches Show. That offensive line has been really good. We'll see them in action again on Saturday against Southern Arkansas. Cal, thanks for coming on, man. Right, Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for having me. Take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk a little Swansu Rodeo here on the Swansu Coaches Show. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one -on -one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled main entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. 
Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we are. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them. And, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. We're back here at Lucille's Roadhouse on the Swasu Coaches Show. Time now to talk a little rodeo with head coach Mike Fisneski. Coach, uh, this is outside of my comfort zone, so bear with me. I'm from suburban Kansas City. That's my defense. Oh, hey, Although that's I've, okay. I've been to the American Royal a bunch of times. i got to say I enjoyed it. Oh shoot! You're you're all set. Then. I'm, I'm I'm good to go. Uh, you guys Great go up to uh, you guys go to Colby, Kansas. I'm a Kansas kid, so that's uh, that's well, not a drive I would wish on anybody. Yeah, well, that's where our first rodeo was was Colby, and we go to Durant this weekend. That Colby one a week and a half ago, I guess. Uh, guys finished fifth, girl seventh. Uh, initial thoughts from you? How did you guys perform? Well, as a whole, we performed well. Um, we had a couple uh, some kind of tough draws in the rough stock. Tim Troyer, our freshman bronc rider, did a fantastic job, but really didn't have enough horsepower to win, but he he dang sure did his job. Uh, Jesse Troyer, his brother in the bareback riding, kind of the same deal. But, uh, you know, as a whole, I thought we performed well. Leighton Little, I mean, rope outstanding. Uh, Shelby Lankford, uh, Kristen uh, Reeves, another freshman, rope really good in, in long go. Made a good showing. Um, Winter Williams roped outstanding in the breakaway, and and won that. So you know, I, I feel the team's confident. They're all we got good morale, um, having fun at practice. They they uh, I keep seeing a lot of improvement in all the events. So uh, you know, I feel I feel really good about Durant and the rest of the year so far. When you came into this season, obviously last year, you know, we were following uh, Shelby at Nationals. We were following Nathan at Nationals. We are following everybody at Nationals. Coming into this year with, with some back and some have gone, what did you think the strengths were going to be for, for both teams? Well, the strength is, you know, we do have some experience coming back, uh, you know, like Taylor Legas and uh, Shelby. They've both seen FR qualifiers, um, you know, so so – they, they want to go back again. They want to win that again. They're working hard. Um, and then and they're really good leadership. So, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, bringing the other girls along. Our, our men's team, uh, we have some guys that, you know, Tim Troyer, shoot, he's, he's winning a, an amateur association right now. Um, you know, he was winning it coming right out of high school. He's a national champion out of high school. So, uh you know, they're having a lot of fun. They want to win. They know how to rodeo. Um, the the new blood is, is it's really fun because we got a lot of new people. Yeah. But we have, you know, like I said, great leadership here that's been here for a long time. Uh, uh, our GA, Wyatt Lohman, awesome leader. And, uh, you know, he's, he's helping point them all in the right direction. So it's been a lot of fun. I know that I wanted to ask you about this. You know, I, I see on, on social media, Sage Kimsey goes out and qualifies for the National Finals Rodeo again. He's a world champion, obviously an alum. To have a guy like that out there doing what he's doing and cashing some big checks on the pro circuit, for those young guys and girls that you have here now, how much of that do you think is an inspiration for them to look up and say, okay, this guy was doing exactly what I'm doing, and now look at where he's at? You know, Sage Kimsey's a, a great inspiration for, for our young teammates, um, for all the teammates. He's winning the world right now by almost $100,000 in the PRCA. You know, and I want to shout out to Emily Miller, too. She's a Weatherford resident and an alumni, and she's coming in seventh in the barrel racing. So, you know, congrats to her. Um, you know, uh, Trey Kimsey, he's another alumni. Sage's yeah. little brother, he's coming in 15th. And, and we have lots of other alumni and the pros. But, you know, yeah, they're all watching them. They're all watching them, and they know – and uh, and and you know, like Wyatt Loman, our GA, he he lets them know that too. He's like, hey, the, these guys are alumni. You all need to pay attention. They were in your shoes. Yeah. And uh, you know, you can go there too if you do the right things. I know you guys go to uh, Durant this weekend, the second rodeo of the year. So, uh, what are your expectations for the next few days? 
Well, my expectations are, you know, be ready, which I, I feel that they are, and, you know, get in there and, you know, and execute. And, and you got to be in the right frame of mind. It's got to be the right mindset. And they, you know, they all know that. So it's, it's get in there, uh, you know, control your effort and your attitude, the uh, control the controllables and, and execute. So it's, it's just the same thing that we do in the practice pen. Um, but, but they got to, you know, they got to trust their horse. They got to trust their self to compete at, at their highest potential. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I expect out of them. I know you guys have a, have a fundraiser coming up at, uh, I, I don't know too much about it. So, so, so I'll let you go to tell us about the fundraiser you guys are going on, what you're doing, where it's at, where, where people can find out about it. Hey, I appreciate you bringing that up. November 9th, we're having a dinner, um, and it's a drawdown dinner, so the first 200 tickets sold, each ticket gets gives uh, two people in the door for a steak dinner. Your ticket goes in a raffle. Um, as soon as the dinner starts, we'll start drawing all the tickets out. The last three tickets, uh, you know, third wins 500, second wins 1,000, first wins 2,000, I believe, and then we'll have a silent auction there. So it'll be a really casual deal. A lot of people are coming just to visit and hang out and yeah. talk, and... Uh, We'll have uh, a, a live band right after the dinner, and uh, it's supposed to be a lot of fun. Uh, Ty Tyler Wilhelm and his family are, are, are the live band. They're, they're from Elk City. Lane, his brother, was is an alumni. He rode bulls for us here. So they're really, really good, and anybody can buy a ticket. It doesn't have to be an alumni. It can be anybody, and you can find that on our foundation website or on the Swassie Rodeo fan page. We, we'll, we'll keep putting it up there. Okay. Where's it at again? It's it's at Sugar Creek Casino Sugar Creek, okay. in Hinton, Hinton, Oklahoma. You had me at steak dinner. Yep. So November 9th, uh, fundraiser for Swassi Rodeo. So go to the foundation website. You can get tickets to that. Uh, make sure you go out and support them. And obviously the Swassi Rodeo coming up uh, later on in the season, which is always a huge deal. Uh, you know, we, we talk about community support for, for every sport and, and how great Weatherford and Western Oklahoma is. But uh, that Swassi Rodeo brings out a lot of people. Yeah, it brings out a lot of people. And we have... I mean, shoot at Durant, there's 167 barrel racers entered, so there's a lot of contestants this year. There's over 500 in the region right now. Um, you know, 18 schools will be at Durant, over 500 yeah. contestants at each rodeo, so uh, the the numbers will be similar here to Swasu Rodeo, and, and I mean, yes, the community support and the sponsors, I mean, they're all great, and we couldn't do it without them, and, and I really, really appreciate them, so... You know, without you guys, it just wouldn't happen. So it's a great community event. We're, we're uh, you know, always uh, glad to put on a, you know, professional mm -hmm. level event for everybody. And, you know, come come out and support your Bulldogs. I can't wait for it. And uh, obviously that uh, fundraiser dinner, November the 9th at Sugar Creek Casino and Hinton Foundation website are also Swasser Rodeo on Facebook. Coach Wisniewski, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take a break. We'll talk to one of his rodeo athletes. Talk to Leighton Little when we come back on the Swasu Coaches Show. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. When was the last time you looked at your cellular bill? No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that will help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. 
Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of our smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas and Weatherford, your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. Welcome back to the Swasu Coaches Show here at Lucille's Roadhouse in Weatherford. I'm Stephen McTeer. We're still on rodeo. We're talking with Junior Leighton Little uh, from Calf Roping and Team Roping for the Swasu Bulldogs. Uh, Leighton, thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I know uh, 10 days ago you guys were in Colby. Again, that's not a drive I'd wish on my worst enemy. No, it, is, it, it, is, it is lonely out there. Yes, sir. Uh, you take third in, in, in calf roping. I guess uh, kind of take us through what you thought of, of the way that you performed in your first rodeo of the season. Um, It's been... It's been rough the last two years uh, coming in, you know, from my freshman year. it I wasn't really – I was nervous about it, and I really shouldn't have been. You know, I knew I could compete with these guys and uh, st finally kicked it around this last weekend. Felt like I belonged there, felt like I could win, and uh, just went and did my thing. My first round uh, calf, I was 10.3 uh, seconds. Uh, after I run her, I was winning third, and uh, – so I felt pretty confident I was going to get me another one, a uh, short round on Sunday. And uh, I ended up winning fifth in the first round. So I knew I still had a chance to come back and win, you know, in the top three there in the short round. I just had to go do my thing, the same thing in the short round to uh, to make to place in the top three. So and that that's just what I did. I knew in the short round I had a good calf, so I seen her out a little farther than what I wanted to and just went down there and, I jerked her down, so I, when you jerk them down, you got to get them up. They got to mm -hmm. be standing on all fours, and it uh, took a little bit to get, get her up, and uh, ended up being 11-3, 11-3 or 11-4, I can't really remember, um, and ended up winning third. So it was it was a good weekend. Uh, could have been better, but could, also could have been worse. What changed for you? You know, coming in, you said you were nervous coming in the first rodeos of the year, your first two years. Was it was it mindset? Was, was it coaches? What made you more comfortable coming into the first rodeo? Oh no, it. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, Coach V he preaches to us all year about you know our mindset and and going into being a champion and and that's just. I did the same thing going from junior high to high school. Uh, my freshman year, I was scared i was littler than everybody uh roping against seniors you know so and it's it's took me a lot longer to uh to get in get in the groove to where i know i can win and uh i'm feeling it now so it'll just be it's going to be a great year on how i've changed my mindset and and things are working out for me I asked Coach V this, but w when you look at the pro circuit and you see guys like, like Sage Kimsey and you see guys like Nathan who had the success that he did, mm -hmm. is that an inspiration to you guys as a team looking at those guys knowing that they were in your shoes not too long ago and to see what they're doing out there? Oh, yeah, because, shoot, they've, they're living the same life I am right now, same college, and with the same college, uh, getting taught by the same coach. So, you know, there's there's always things that you can change and things that you want to do better, but really it's all on yourself. and. You just got to go do what you know what to do, and it's going to all end up the same in the in the, uh, in the the end. But you got to trust yourself that you know how to prepare for those situations. And them guys, shoot, they know how to prepare for them situations, which uh, just allows them to win everything that they possibly can. Going into this weekend in Durant, uh, what are some things that, that you take from the Colby Rodeo to this week? What, what are things that you want to improve on from, from then to now? Um, things I want to improve on. I'm going to really be trying the, the first round to not not just go tie my calf down. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to be uh, trying to win first the first round. Uh, team roping at Colby wasn't uh, wasn't the greatest. Uh, kind of didn't have a very good steer. And didn't really handle her very good. But, but we've been working on that this week. Uh, 
for my healer to cl- come up and clean her up. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a good weekend. Got things figured out. Got things changed, and so it's gonna be good this week. With that change in mindset, you know that you said you had. What are some goals that you've set for yourself this year? Uh, I'm gonna dang sure make the the college national finals. Um, that's one thing that people have been telling me the last two years that I should be there, and I think the same thing. It just it just hasn't worked out. And uh, but we're I'm gonna be there this year, and our team's gonna be there, and um, it's just it's gonna be a great year. For we'll all look, of us. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Can, Thank you. Good luck in Durant this weekend. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. We'll round out the Swansu Coaches Show. We'll bring in head coach for the women's basketball team, Kelsey Music. We're at odds right now because we're going to play golf against each other, but we'll still talk to her. Big announcement for the NCAA today. We'll talk more about that when we come back here at Lucille's Roadhouse on the Swansu Coaches Show. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. And CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care, now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. One final time back here to Lucille's Roadhouse. We have got women's basketball coach Kelsey Music and more importantly, Titus Music, <laughs> who I don't think is going to talk. But that being said, he's been in all the big interviews, so we might as well be here. Yeah, as uh, long as, as he keeps it quiet. And keeps his shirt down. He doesn't get an opinion today. No, he does not. Uh, big announcement today, coach, coming from the NCAA. Uh, Haley Tucker, one of the top nine for the NCAA Woman of the Year. I know that that's a, a, a place where a Swasu athlete hasn't been. And uh, she's obviously meant so much to your program. But but what was your initial reaction when when you got that news? I mean, it doesn't su- I mean, honestly it doesn't surprise me. But I'm extremely elated for uh, Haley and just for all of Swasu for what she's been able to do to bring to our program, where she's been able to elevate our program, and and just for her in general, but also for the whole university. It's a it's a huge honor. I know that uh, you know. Obviously, we all know what happened this past year, and 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 the legacy that she left, and that's something that you preached during the year was for your seniors and everybody. But 
to, to leave a legacy. You know, how much does it help you to have that example of, of, a, of the legacy that's possible to leave? You know, I think it's great for recruiting. That's the one one thing that I, I told, you know, like her and Hayden, that if you come here and, you know, they're, especially Haley, she got to come in and start right off the bat as a freshman. And so you really have an opportunity to, to leave a legacy. And she definitely did that. But that's the great thing about being able to get these four-year kids um, to really groom them and grow them and allow them to leave such a legacy, such as what, what Haley was able to do. I mean, she really did elevate her game, get better and better each year and just helped elevate our whole entire Entire program. I know that uh, you know this is not your first senior class that's graduated, but uh, but starting preseason work like you've done and not having them you know gassed after your running workouts that that's got to be you know a little odd to not have Haley Hayden and, and KP and Savannah there. But uh, uh, was it harder than you thought it might be to not have them there? It's definitely different. You know, um, every year it's hard. You you form different relationships and different bonds with with the players. But for what this that, that senior class was able to do, they really were able to leave just a lasting legacy and it was it was just really special what they were able to do and so it does make it hard when you come off of such a high and and such a, a high level of play and where we we're able to take take the team and, and the season we we're able to have it's kind of hard to come down from that and be able to you know start again but I'm excited about our future we just have you know we have a lot to learn we're young I always say a youth is a blessing and a curse so I know that uh, you've started the preseason running workouts, so your players hate you right now. Yes. Absolutely, at 6 a.m., uh, they're not fond of you. I know that uh, you know that practice doesn't get to start for another shoot two weeks, which you're last to go. So, uh, but uh, preseason workouts, everything going well so far? Yeah, they're slowly and surely getting in shape. Like you said, they don't like me right now, and and that's okay. They're not supposed to, but um, we're we're trying to get better each and every day. Running is always a key thing for us um, you know we are able to get a few extra hours of practice but I can't give up my running because we have to be in in superb shape and um, we've got to be able to really push that tempo on both ends of the floor so the, the preseason is very important to me and I, I take it serious and I push our players to to another level and to pass their limits usually so um, but I'm excited about this preseason and what we're able to to gain and learn as we get ready to gear up for practice. But we're I'm anxious to hit that hard win on a regular basis. I can imagine because once practice starts, you're what two weeks away from playing Tulsa in an exhibition game. Absolutely, plenty, it's coming up fast. Plenty of time. Uh, I yeah. know. I, I'm you know when we'll talk before that game. I know that I've heard rumors faster this year. Hey, which is terrifying. <laughs> Hey, it's never fast enough for me. I, I think I, you don't know probably how many times we had one of our practices today that we get in our little eight hour week. And I, I think I don't know how many times I yelled that that's not fast enough, that that's not fast enough today. So uh, multiple times it was preached and pointed out. Pointed out. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. <laughs> also, in 20 days, uh, we will both be at Oak Tree, uh, hopefully not on the same team, competing at the Everett Dobson uh, Swasu fundraising golf tournament. And uh, if I lose, I will not be able to show my face. No, you won't. Because I'm not going to ever let it let you live it down. And on, I'm going to talk mad trash to you. Not on campus. Prior not, to, I, I'll never, during, at all times. I'll never be able to come to Weatherford again. I'll have to pack up my stuff and leave. Uh, I'm going to the driving range right after this. Uh, but coach, thanks for coming on. Uh, Haley has won basically everything else. So I, I'm hoping that she wins this NCAA Woman of the Year award. I do too. She's very much, like I said, deserving. And what she's been able to do for Swasu is just, it's it's just amazing. And she's been extremely blessed. But, you know, she's a very special player. And we, I'm just glad she was ours for four years. That's the first normal thing you've done here too. I don't know what you were doing the whole time. <laughs> you going to see you and I say hi to your Mimi too? You see, you going to wave hello? You going to wave? No, dude. She's going to be so disappointed. All right, well, there we are. Coach Music joining us. Uh, we, our thanks to all of our guests tonight. Again, Swasu Football is back at it on Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock kick, 1 o'clock pregame on 100.3 Kyle Classic from Magnolia against Southern Arc. Basketball season here before we know it as well. We'll see you all next Wednesday night for another edition of the Swasu Coaches Show.